The South African trucking industry is under siege. Over the last two weeks, there have been 35 recorded instances of trucks being looted and burnt on South Africa's highways. Since April of this year, there have been 84 recorded instances of such attacks. What is driving this? Well, joining me to discuss is CEO of the Road Freight Association, Gavin Kelly. Gavin, welcome. Could you give our viewers an understanding of what is driving this recent wave of truck attacks? Well, the reason for the attack seems to be something that has been with us for the last at least three years, but has been around in the marketplace and in employment circles in general for a lot longer than that. And that is the employment of foreign nationals by South African companies. And obviously that is based on the premise that these foreign nationals are firstly being illegally employed, and that secondly, they are being employed in preference to South African citizens. That really was what was raised a number of years ago and now seems to have been the exact grounding for this type of attack right now. So Gavin, could you provide us some details of the nature of these attacks? Uh, what are the methods uh, that are being used and uh, how damaging have, have these attacks been to the trucking industry? Well, in the first instant, they are extremely violent and they can be anything between a simple protest on the side of the road to a stoning, to a cordoning off of the road, a blockading of the road, if you would, to pushing the trucks off the road. And then of course, to the extreme, which is actually shooting at the drivers and then burning the trucks. In many instances, the trucks, once they have been stopped or pushed off into a corner or drawn across the road, the drivers are, are then forced out of the vehicle, their keys are taken away. And then we see looting happening. So your first question would be, is this really about a labor thing or is there something else lying behind this like common criminality? And then the trucks are then torched or burnt. We have had a couple of cases, very severe cases, where the trucks are shot at as they are passing by. And normally it's been done at night for obvious reasons of not being identified as the perpetrators. They're shot at. And we've had one case of a driver actually dying at the roadside. He was shot at, got out of the truck. He was then torched alive next to his truck. And we have another driver severely injured lying in hospital as we speak. What's of interest is that both of those drivers were South African citizens or are South African citizens, the one who's passed away obviously was. So is this about foreign drivers or is this about something else? And that brings me to the second part of your question as to what is this really about? We feel this is not about foreign individuals being employed in this industry. This is about destabilizing the industry from a political point of view. And we've heard suggestion that this is another one of these mafia type groups that's just been busy in the small construction sector and has created a huge amount of problems there. So we believe it has got a far more sinister, wider objective than just a labor issue. So Gavin, how have the authorities responded to this crisis? Are you seeing the requisite action from the SAPs? Well, that's one of the very points that I raised in my letter to the president when I, I raised this whole specter of what was happening in the country. We feel that the South African police services are not doing what we'd expect them to do. And, and there are three parts to that. The first part is we feel that they are not doing any sort of preemptive investigation, any sort of preemptive work to stop this sort of thing happening or apprehending those who are inciting violence. There's no other term for this. This is inciting violence and it's wanton violence. It isn't directed at any specific thing. It just seems to be if you're in a truck, you're at the wrong place at the wrong time, generally at night, and we've seen a couple of hotspots, then toughies for you, whether you're a foreigner or not, irrespective. So that's the first thing. What's happened to the intelligence capacity of the South African police services or our security cluster? The second thing is that when incidents happen, and there is video footage of this happening. We've got a number of reports. The SAPs don't intervene. They actually stand and watch. Yes, I know there's a point at which you need to decide whether you, know, you can do anything to the situation, but generally it seems they don't intervene. And I don't know if that's from a 
resource point of view or whether the saps just don't have the political will to get involved because they're either not instructed to or because of some experiences you remember that nasty disaster around the mines in rustenburg a couple of years ago that still seems to haunt everybody so we don't see any any directed and involved saps action at the scene of the crime and then the final thing is that there are no follow-ups there are no arrests you know, prosecutions. We've had a murder committed two weeks ago. It's a murder. That guy didn't die by himself. That's a murder. Nothing happened. And, and that's cause for concern that in this whole process, people seem to be able to do what they'd like to do. And there's just no uh, any sort of, of prosecution or being held accountable for what you're doing. Gavin, what steps need to be taken in order to resolve this crisis? Well, we had made a number of proposals to the ministerial task team that was set up in 2018 after those first attacks, which really grabbed everyone's attention. You recall there were attacks near the Moy River toll plaza over that Easter weekend. And out of those attacks, the first sort of rumblings from these disaffected parties were brought to the attention and the so-called foreign driver aspect was then raised. And we'd made a number of proposals. Those proposals need to be implemented. You can't have government saying two and a half years down the line, are we going to look at whether the legislation is correct or, or functional or whatever? Because that's one of the things. If you've got foreign drivers working in, in positions that should be for South African citizens, then you've obviously got to look at the process that allows them to work in those positions. Because believe you me, in terms of the legislation, that's not easy. The, the employer has to prove that he or she can't find a South African to fill that position. Whether it's a truck driver or a doctor or a dentist, it's immaterial. The legislation is the same. If you want to employ an individual, the onus is on the employer in South Africa to prove that there isn't a South African citizen to fulfill that role. So there is something critically wrong. And that's not something that we as the employer can fix if it's being allowed at a government department or as the ADTF has made the allegation that these permits are handed out willy nilly. So, so then, you know, as an employer, you'll get somebody in front of you like a fake driving license and you would believe the document at face value is, is valid. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that if we know that there are operators, transporters, employing people illegally. If we know there are companies who are breaking the law, who have chosen to break the law, why are we not dealing with them? Why are we not prosecuting them? Why is the Department of Labor not doing those investigations and then holding these people accountable? Whether it's the employer or the individuals, whatever the case, it takes two to tango. Why is that not being done? And then finally, we need to make it very clear that there's a structured process in which you can address your concerns. And if those concerns are not met, you don't go into a violent nature. So the SAPs do what they need to do. Those are the three things that we need really need to sort out here. Um, and then we've also made, I showed four, we've also made a, a proposal to the, to the minister and, and to the president, but to the minister of transport two years ago, that South Africa follows the same process done in many other countries, where if you want to be a road transporter, in this case, or with a bus transporter, it doesn't matter. But if you want to be in the road freight sector, you need to be certified by a professional body who will check your various bona fides, who you employ, whether you meet the bargaining council main agreement, which stipulates minimums. And then if you meet all of those, you can prove your registration. We then recommend you get registered with the Department of Transport. Otherwise, we're going to be where we are. Gavin, thank you very much. I certainly hope that this issue is treated with the urgency that it deserves. That's all from me, David Ansara. Please remember, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and check out the link in the description below to our 30-day free trial. Also, let us know what you think in the comments section. Why is government dragging its feet when it comes to securing South Africa's roads?